And now, Act Two of The Mikado. downcast eye let it brim with dew try if you can cry we will do so too when your summons start like a frightened row flutter little heart color come and go Japanese way. Why it is that I'm so much more attractive than anybody else in the whole world. 
Can this be vanity? No! Nature is lovely and rejoices in her loveliness. I am a child of nature and take after my mother. <laughs> you know. I don't know about that. It all depends. Well, at all events, he will find it a drawback. Not necessarily. Bless you. It all depends. I think it very indelicate of you to refer to such a subject on such a day. My married happiness is to be... to be... Cut short. on her wedding morn. They've been reminding me that in a month you're to be beheaded. Yes, we've been reminding her that you're to be beheaded. <laughs> yes, it's quite true, you know. You are to be beheaded. <laughs> now, some bridegrooms would be depressed by this sort of thing. Uh, a month? Well, what's a month? These divisions of time are purely arbitrary. Who says 24 hours make a day? 
your impression to that effect. Well, then, then we'll efface it. We'll call each second a minute, each minute an hour, each hour a day, and each day a year. At that rate, we've about 30 years of married happiness before us. And at that rate, this interview has already lasted four hours and three quarters. <laughs> oh, it's time for tea. <laughs> yes. A hot time flies when one is thoroughly enjoying oneself. That's the way to look at it. Don't let's be downhearted. There's a silver lining to every cloud. Certainly. Let's, let's be perfectly happy. By all means, let's... Let's thoroughly enjoy ourselves. It's absurd to cry. Quite ridiculous. Brightly oh. <laughs> dawns our wedding day. Joy us all we give thee greeting. Wither, wither, us completing. Think a moment, pray this day. Think a moment, pray this day. What the mortal joys be hollow? Pleasures come if sorrows follow. Though the drops in sound they low.
Oh, go on. Don't mind me. Oh, uh, <clears throat> uh, I'm afraid we're distressing you. And never mind. I must get used to it. Only please do it by degrees. Begin by putting your arm around her waist. There. Let me get used to that first. Wouldn't you like to retire? It must pain you to see us so affectionate together. Uh, no, I must learn to bear it. Now oblige me by allowing her head to rest on your shoulder. Like that? Thank you. Mm. I am much obliged to you. Now, kiss her. It's simple torture. Come, come, there, Rob. After all, it's only for a month. Oh, no, no. It's no use deluding oneself with false hopes. What, what do, you, do you, mean? you mean? My child, my poor child. How shall I break it to her? My little bride that was to have been. Was to have been? Yes, you never can be mine. What? I'm so <laughs> I've just ascertained that by the Mikado's law, when a married man is beheaded, his wife is buried alive. <laughs> buried buried alive. alive? Buried alive. It's a most unpleasant death. Oh, but who did you get that from? Oh, from Poobah. He's my solicitor. But he may be mistaken. Oh, so I thought. So I consulted the Attorney General, the Master of the Rolls, the Judge Ordinary, and the Lord Chancellor. They're all of the same opinion. Never knew such unanimity on a point of law in my life. <laughs> but stop a bit. This law has never been put in force. Oh, not yet. You see, flirting is the only crime punishable by decapitation, and married men never flirt. Of course, they don't. I quite forgot that. Well, I suppose I may take it that my dream of married happiness is at an end. Darling, I don't want to appear selfish, and I'd love you with all my heart. I don't suppose I shall ever love anybody else half as much. But when I agreed to marry you, my own, I had no idea, pet, that I should have to be buried alive in a month. Nor I. It's the very first I've heard of it. It... It makes a difference, doesn't it? It does make a difference, of course. You see, burial alive. It's such a... stuffy death. Oh, I call it a beast of a death. You see my difficulty, don't you? Yes, and I see my own. If I insist on your carrying out your promise, I doom you to a hideous death. If I release you, you marry Coco at once. Here's a howdy-do, if I marry you. When the time has come to perish, then the maiden whom you cherish must be slaughtered too. Here's a howdy-do, here's a howdy-do. Here's a pretty mess, in a month or less. I must die without the wedding. Let the bitter tears I'm shedding witness my distress. Here's a pretty mess. Here's a pretty mess. Here's a state of things to her life she clings. Matrimonial devotion doesn't seem to suit her notion. Burial it brings. Here's a state of things. Here's a state of things. With a passion that's intense, I wish it bad and all her gore. But the load of common sense keep on him to we ignore. If what he says is true, he's kept to marry you. Here's a pretty state of things, here's a pretty howdy-do. Here's a pretty state of things, a pretty state of things. Here's a howdy-do, here's a howdy-do. For if what they say is true, I cannot, cannot marry you. Here's a pretty, pretty state of things. Here's a pretty, pretty state of things. Here's a howdy-do, do her life she clears. Memorial devotion doesn't seem to sink her notion. Burial it brings, burial it brings. Here's a pretty state of things. Here's a pretty howdy do. Here's a pretty state of things. A pretty state of things. Here's a howdy do. Here's a 
duty to her life she gives a bit Memorial devotion doesn't seem to suit her notion Burial that brings, burial that brings Here's a pretty state of things, here's a pretty how de do Here's a pretty state of things, a pretty state of things I'm really very sorry for you. Oh, thanks, old fellow. I'm sure you are. You see, I'm quite helpless. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I quite see that. I can't conceive anything more distressing than to have one's marriage broken off at the last moment. Oh, but you shan't be disappointed of a wedding. You shall come to mine. Oh, that's awfully kind of you, but that's impossible. Why so? Today, I die. What do you mean? I can't live without Yum Yum. This afternoon, I perform the happy dispatch. Oh, no, no, pardon me, I can't allow that. Why not? Why, hang it all, you're under contract to die by the hands of the public executioner in a month's time. Now, if you kill yourself, what's to become of me? I shall have to be executed in your place. Well, it would certainly seem so. Wait, now then, Lord Mayor, what is it? The Mikado. Oh, oh Mikado. <laughs> and his suite are approaching the city and will be here in ten minutes. Oh, the Mikado, he's coming to see whether his orders have been carried out. Now, look here, you know, this is getting serious. A bargain's a bargain. And you really mustn't frustrate the ends of justice by committing suicide. As a man of honor and a gentleman, you are bound to die ignominiously by the hands of the public executioner. Very well, then, behead me. What now? Certainly, at once. Chop it off, chop it off, chop it off! <laughs> My good sir, I don't go about prepared to execute gentlemen at a moment's notice. Why, well, I've never even killed a blue bottle. Still as Lord High Executioner. My good sir, as Lord High Executioner, I've got to behead him in a month's time. No, I'm not ready yet. I don't know how it's done. I'm going to take lessons. I mean to begin with a guinea pig and work my way up through the animal kingdom until I come to a Japanese tenor. You don't suppose I'd have accepted the post of Lord High Executioner if I hadn't thought the duties were purely nominal? I can't kill you. I can't kill anything. I can't kill anybody. Oh, come, 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 my poor fellow. We all have unpleasant duties to discharge at times. After all, what is it? If I don't mind, why should you? Remember, sooner or later, it must be done. Must it? <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. What do you mean? Why should I kill you when making an affidavit that you'd been executed will do just as well? There are plenty of witnesses. The Lord Chief Justice, the Lord High Admiral, Commander-in-Chief, Secretary of State for the Home Department, First Lord of the Treasury, and Chief Commissioner of Police. But where are they? There they are. They'll all swear to it, won't you? Am I to understand that all us high officers of state are required to perjure ourselves in order to ensure your safety? Well, why not? You'll be grossly insulted, as usual. Will the insult be cashed down or at a later date? Oh, it will be a ready-money transaction. <laughs> Very well, then. Choose your fiction and I'll endorse it. Now, how do you like that, my family pride? Mm -hmm. Yes, but I tell you that life without yum yum. Oh, is yum yum, yum yum, bother yum yum. Here, Commissioner, go and fetch yum yum. Now take yum yum and marry yum yum, only go away and never come back again. Oh, here she comes. Yum yum, are you particularly busy? Not particularly. Have you five minutes to spare? Yes. Then, go along with his grace, the Archbishop of Titipu. He'll marry you at once. Oh, but if I'm to be buried alive... Now, don't ask any questions, but do as I tell you. Nanky Poo will explain yes, all. Yes, but just a moment. Not for worlds. Here comes the Mikado. Oh, and if he finds you alive, I, I shall have the greatest difficulty in persuading him that I beheaded you. Close thing, that. Chop, chop, wait. Here he comes. <laughs> Thank you.
every kind of man obedience I expect. I'm the emperor of Japan. And I'm his daughter-in-law elect. He'll marry his son. He's only got one to his daughter-in-law elect. My morals have been declared particularly correct. But they're nothing at all compared with those of his daughter-in-law elect. Paul, Paul, to his daughter-in-law elect. Paul. kind of way I govern each tribe and sect all cheerfully own my sway except his daughter-in-law elect as tough as a bone with a will of her own is his daughter-in-law elect my nature is love and light my freedom from all defect he's insignificant quite compared to his daughter-in-law elect oh oh to his daughter-in-law elect Mikado never did in Japan exist. Oh, nobody second, I'm certainly reckoned a true philanthropist. It is my very humane endeavor to make to some extent each evil never a running river of harmless merry men. Am I object all sublime? I shall achieve in time to let the punishment fit to the crime, the punishment fit to the crime, and make it prisoner pent, unwillingly represent a source of innocent merriment, of innocent merriment. <laughs> All prosy dull society sinners who chatter and bleach and war are sent to hear sermons from mystical Germans who preach from ten till four. The amateur tenor whose vocal villain is all a desire to shirk shall during of hours exhibit his powers to Madame to sort wax work. The lady who dyes a chemical red or stains her grey hair puce who pinches her figure is painted with a vigor. And a permanent one, a juice. The idiot who in railway carriages scribbles on window panes. We only suffer to ride on a buffer in a parliamentary terrain. Am I a jiggle as a I shall achieve in time to let the punishment fit to the crime, the punishment fit to the crime, and make it prisoner pins and willingly represent a source of innocent merriment, of innocent merriment. His object all sublime, he will achieve in time to let the punishment fit to the crime, the punishment fit to the crime, and make it prisoner Advertising quack who wearies with tales of countless cures. His teeth I've enacted shall all be extracted by terrified amateurs. The musical singer attends a series of masses and fugues and oh. By barking to woven with spawn, Beethoven, the classical Monday pops. The billiard sharp, whom anyone catches his feet, extremely hard. He's made to dwell in a dungeon cell. On a spot that's always barred, and there he plays extravagant matches in fitless finger stalls on a cloth on a true with a twisted keel and elliptical billiard ball. <laughs> Sublime, I shall achieve in time to let the 
punishment fit the crime. The punishment fit the crime. An army, it prisoner fit, and willingly represent a source of innocent merriment, of innocent merriment. <laughs> permitted to welcome your majesty i guess the object of your majesty's visit your wishes have been attended to oh yes the execution has taken place uh, you've had an execution have you oh, oh yes the uh, uh, coroner has uh, just handed me a certificate i am the coroner your majesty yes 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 i see and this is the certificate of his death <laughs> At Titipu, in the presence of the Lord Chancellor, Lord Chief Justice, Attorney General, Secretary of State for the Home Department, Lord Mayor, and Groom of the Second Floor Front. They were all present, Your Majesty. I counted them myself. Very good house. I wish I'd been in time for the performance. And a tough fellow he was, too. A man of gigantic strength. His struggles were terrific. It was really a very remarkable scene. Describe it. <laughs> the criminal cried as he dropped him down in a state of wild alarm. With a frightful, frantic, fearful frown, I bared my big right arm. I seized him by his little pigtail, and on his knees fell he. As he squirmed and struggled and gurgled and guggled, I drew my stickers my Snickers knee. Oh, never shall I forget the cry or the shriek that shrieked he. As I gnashed my teeth, when from its sheath I drew my Snickers knee. We know him well, he cannot tell a true or countless tales. He always tries to mutter. and shook as he gave the sign for the stroke he didn't deserve when all of a sudden his eye met mine and it seemed to brace his nerve for he nodded his head and kissed his hand and whistled an air did he as a saber true cut cleanly through his cervical vertebrae his vertebrae when a man's afraid, a beautiful maid is a cheering sight to see. And it's oh, I'm glad that moment sad was soothed by sight of me. A terrible tale you can't assail when truth is quite a breeze. Her taste exact for false respect amounts to a disease. Now, though you'd have said that head was dead, for it's all wholly dead was he. It stood on its neck with a smile well-bred and bowed three times to me. It was none of your impudent off and nods, but as humble as could be. For it clearly knew the deference due to a man of pedigree. Of pedigree. And it's oh, I vow, his deathly bow was a touching sight to see. Me! The trouble was yet, it couldn't forget the deference due to me. He swore to you, he speaks the truth whenever he finds it pays. And in this case, it falls to place exactly as he says. Exactly, 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 exactly. exactly. This is very interesting, and I should like to have seen it, but we came about a totally different matter. A year ago, my son, the heir to the throne of Japan, bolted from our imperial court. Indeed. Had he any reason to be dissatisfied with his position? Well, none whatever. On the contrary, I was going to marry him, and yet he fled. 
I'm surprised he should have fled from one so lovely. <laughs> That's not true. No. <laughs> now, you hold that I'm not beautiful because my face is plain. Ah, but you know nothing. You are still unenlightened. Well, learn then that it is not only in the face that beauty is to be sought. Well, my face is unattractive. It is. <laughs> <laughs> But I have a left shoulder blade that is a miracle of loveliness. People come miles to see it. My right elbow has a fascination that few can resist. Allow me. <laughs> As for my circulation, it is the largest in the world. And yet he fled. And is now masquerading in this town disguised as a second trombone. <laughs> A, a second, second trombone? trombone? Yes. <laughs> Would it be troubling you too much if I asked you to produce him? He goes by the name of... Uh, uh, Nanky Poop. Oh, Nanky Poop. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, it is quite easy to produce him. That is, it's rather difficult. Uh, in point of fact, uh, he's gone abroad. Gone abroad? His address. And Niagara on the lake. <laughs> oh, oh, see here, his name, Nanky Poo, bearded this morning. Oh, where shall I find another? Where shall I find another? <laughs> dear, 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 this is all very tiresome. My poor fellow, in your anxiety to carry out my wishes, it seems that you have beheaded the heir to the throne of Japan. I beg to offer an unqualified apology. I desire to associate myself with that expression of regret. We really had the latest notion. Of course you hadn't. How could you? Come, come, my poor fellow, don't distress yourself. It was really no fault of yours. If a man of exalted rank wishes to disguise himself as a second trombone, then he must bear the consequences. It really does distress me to see you take on so. I have no doubt they thoroughly deserved all he got. Well, we, we are infinitely obliged to your majesty. Much obliged! Very much obliged, Your Majesty. Obliged? Not a bit. Don't mention it. How could you tell? <laughs> well, of course, we didn't know who the gentleman really was. Wasn't written on his forehead, you know. No, it would have been written on his American Express card, but he must have left home without it. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I forget the punishment for compassing the death of the heir apparent. <laughs> Punishment? Yes, it's something like lingering with boiling oil in it, I fancy. <laughs> something of that sort. Though I think boiling oil occurs in it, but I'm not sure. I know it's something humorous. <laughs> <laughs> but lingering. Yeah. Either boiling oil or melted lead. <laughs> oh, come, come, don't fret. I'm not a bit angry. <laughs> if, if Your Majesty will accept our assurance, we have no idea. I know. I wasn't there. Aha! You see, that's the pathetic part of it. Unfortunately, the fool of an act says compassing the death of the heir apparent. There's not a word about a mistake. No. Or people not knowing. No. Or having a notion. No. Or not being there. No. There should be, of course. Oh, yes. But there isn't. Uh, that's a slovenly way in which these acts are always drawn. However, cheer up. I'll have it altered. <laughs> Next session. Uh. Now, let's see about your execution. A real after luncheon suit you. Can you wait till then? Oh, oh yes, yes, we can wait till then. then. Splendid. <laughs> then we'll make it after luncheon. Luncheon. I'm really very sorry for you all, but it's an unjust world. And virtue is triumphant only in theatrical performances. <laughs> Well, a nice mess you got us into with your nodding head and your, your deference due to a man of pedigree. Merely corroborative detail intended to give artistic verisimilitude to an otherwise bald and unconvincing narrative. Corroborative detail and corroborative fiddlestick! And you're just as bad as he is with your cock and bull stories about catching his eye and his whistling in air when a man's afraid a beautiful maid is a gas. Oh, yes? And what about your big right arm, huh? Yes, and you are a snicker sneeze. Well, 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 never mind that now. There's only one thing to be done. Nanky Poo hasn't started yet. He must come back to life again at once. Here he comes. Here, Nanky Poo, I've news for you. You've been reprieved. Oh, but it's too late. 
I'm a dead man, and I'm off for my honeymoon. Nonsense! What are you talking about? A terrible thing has just happened. It seems you are the son of the Mikado. Oh, Mikado. Mikado. Oh, yes, but that happened some time ago. Is this a time for airy persiflage? Your father is here. And with Katisha. My father? And with Katisha. Yes, he wants you particularly. And so does she. <laughs> oh, but he's married now. Oh, but bless my heart, what has that to do with it? Katisha claims me in marriage, but I can't marry her because I'm married already. Mm. Consequently, she will insist on my execution, but if I'm executed, my wife will have to be buried alive. You see our difficulty. Yes, I don't know what's to be done. There's one chance for you. If you could persuade Katasha to marry you, she would have no further claim on me. In that case, I could come to life without any fear of being put to death. <laughs> I marry Katasha? I really think it's the only course. But my good girl, have you seen her? She's something appalling. Oh, but that's only her face. She has a left elbow that people come miles to see. Yes, and I'm told that her circulation is much admired by connoisseurs. And my good sir, I decline to pin my heart on any lady's circulation. Well, it comes to this. While Katasha is single, I prefer to be a disembodied spirit. When Katasha is married, existence will be as welcome as the flowers in spring. <laughs> Flowers that bloom in the spring, tra la, we promise of merry sunshine. As we merrily dance and we sing, tra la, we welcome the hope that they bring, tra la, of a summer of roses and wine, of a summer of roses and wine. And that's what we mean when we say that a thing is welcome as flowers that bloom in the spring. Ah. And the spring trolla have nothing to do with the case. I've got to take under my wing trolla a most unattractive old thing trolla with a caricature of a face, with a caricature of a face. And that's what I mean when I say, or I see. Bother the flowers that bloom in the spring. Tra la 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 la, tra la 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 la. Bother the flowers of spring. Tra la 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 la, tra la 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 la. I've got to take under my wing trolla a most unattractive old thing trolla with a caricature of a face, with a caricature of a face. And that's what I mean when I say or I sing, oh, bother the flowers that bloom in the spring. Tra la 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 la, tra la 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 la, oh, bother the flowers of spring. Tra la 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 la, tra la 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 la, tra la 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 la. -la.
My soul is still my body's prisoner. Remote the peace that death alone can give. My doom to wait. My punishment to live. Do not break, they sting and ache for old love's sake, but do not die. For with each breath they long for death, as witness at the living Katisha! 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 Oh, the miscreant who robbed me of my love! Well, vengeance pursues! They are heating the cauldron! Uh, Katisha, behold a suppliant at your feet! Katisha, mercy! Mercy? Had you mercy on him? See here, you! You're slain, my love! Well, he did not love me, but he would have loved me in time! taste. Only the educated palate can appreciate me, but I was educating his palate when he left me. So he is dead, and where shall I find another? It takes years to train a man to love me, to go through the weary round again, and at the same time implore mercy for you, who robbed me of my prey. I mean my pupil, just as his education was on the point of completion. Oh, where shall I find another? Here, here. What? Katisha, for years I have loved oh. you with a white hot passion that is slowly but surely consuming my very vitals. Ah, shrink not from me. 
Katisha, if there is aught of woman's mercy in your heart, turn not your back upon a lovesick suppliant whose every fiber <laughs> thrills to your tiniest touch. True it is that under a poor mask of disgust, I have endeavored to conceal a passion whose inner fires are boiling the soul within me, but the fire will not be smothered. It defies all attempts at extinction, and breaking forth all the more eagerly for its long restraint, declares itself in words that will not be weighed, that cannot be schooled, that should not be too severely criticized. Katisha, I dare not hope for your love, but I will not live without it. Dodge! <laughs> You, you whose hands still reek with the blood of my betrothed, dare to address words of passion to the woman you have so foully wronged. I do accept my love, or I perish on the spot. Go to. Who knows so well as I that no one ever yet died of a broken heart? You know not what you say. Listen. <laughs> On a tree by a river, a little tom tit sang willow, tit willow, tit willow. I said to him, Dicky Bird, why do you sit singing willow, tit willow, tit willow? Is it weakness of intellect, buddy? I cried. Or a rather tough worm in your little inside. With a shake of his poor little head, he replied, Oh, willow, tit willow, tit willow. He slapped at his chest as he sat on that bough, singing willow, tit willow, tit willow. And a cold perspiration bespangled his brow. Oh, willow, tit willow, tit willow. He sobbed and he sighed, and a gurgle he gave. Then he plunged himself into the billowy wave. And an echo arose from the suicide's grave. Oh, willow, tit willow, tit willow. <laughs> Now I feel just as sure as I'm sure that my name isn't Willow, Tit Willow, Tit Willow. That was blighted affection that made him exclaim, Oh, Willow, Tit Willow, Tit Willow. And if you remain callous and obdurate, I shall perish as he did, and you will know why. Though I probably shall not exclaim as I die. Oh, willow, tit willow, tit willow. <laughs> did he really die of love? He really did. Oh, all on account of a cruel little head. Yes. Oh, poor little chap. Oh, it's an affecting tale, and quite true. I knew the bird intimately. Did you? Oh, he must have been very fond of her. Oh, his devotion was something extraordinary. Oh, poor little chap. And, and if I refuse you, will you go and do the same? At once. Oh, no, 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 you mustn't. Oh, anything but that. Oh, I'm a silly little goose. <laughs> You are. <laughs> and you won't hate me if I'm just a little teeny weeny wee bit bloodthirsty, will you? Hate you? Oh, Catasha, is there not a beauty even in bloodthirstiness? So, <laughs> my idea is exactly. There is beauty in the bellow of the blast. There is grandeur in the growling of the gale. There's an eloquent outpouring when the lion is a-roaring and the tiger is a-lashing of his tail. Yes, I'd like to see a tiger from the Congo or the Niger, and especially when lashing of his tail. Volcanoes have a splendor that is grim, and earthquakes a 
only terrify the dolts. And to him who's scientific, there is nothing that's terrific in the falling of a flight of thunderbolts. Yes, in spite of all my meekness, if I have a little weakness, it's a passion for a flight of thunderbolts. If that is so, sing Derry down Derry. It's evident, very, our tastes are one. Away we'll go and merrily, marry your toddy, tell it your day is done. old age. Do you fancy you are elderly enough? Information I'm requesting on a subject interesting is a maiden all the better when she's tough. Well, this white dominion, it's the general opinion that she'll last a good deal longer when she's tough. Are you old enough to marry, do you think? Won't wait till you're 80 in the shade. Ooh. There's a fascination frantic in a ruin that's romantic. Do you think you are sufficiently decayed? <laughs> to the matter that you mention, I have given some attention and I think I am sufficiently decayed. If that is so, sing Derry down Derry. It's evident, very our tastes are one. Away we'll go and merrily marry, nor tardily tarry till day is done. If that is so, sing Derry down Derry. It's evident, very our tastes are one. Away we'll go and merrily marry, nor tardily tarry till day is done. Sing Derry down Derry. and we're quite ready. Have all the painful preparations been made? Your Majesty, all is prepared. Then produce the unfortunate gentleman and his two well-meaning but misguided accomplices. Mercy! Mercy for Coco! Mercy for Pity Singh! Mercy! Even for Pooba! I beg your pardon, I don't think I quite caught that last remark. Mercy even for Pooba, sir. <laughs> Mercy! My husband that was to have been is dead. And I have just married this miserable object. Oh, you've not been long about it. Well, we were married before the registrar. I am the registrar, Your Majesty. Oh, yes, yes, I see. But my difficulty is that as you have slain the heir apparent... Oh, but the heir apparent is not slain. Bless my heart, oh, my son. And your daughter-in-law elected. <gasps> Traitor! You have deceived me! Oh, yes, yes, I think you deserve a little explanation, but I think he would give it better whole than in pieces. Oh, well, Your Majesty, you see, it's like this. While it's it's true that I stated I had killed Nanki Poo... Oh, yes, I... the most affecting particulars. Oh. Merely corroborative detail intended to give artistic best... Oh, will you refrain from putting in your oar? <laughs> Majesty, it's like this. When Your Majesty says, let a thing be done, it's as good as done. Practically, it is done because Your Majesty's will is law. Now, Your Majesty says, kill a gentleman. Consequently, a gentleman is told off to be killed. Well, that gentleman is as good as dead. Practically, he is dead. And if he is dead, why not say so? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I see. Nothing could possibly be more satisfactory. For he's gone and married yum yum. Yum yum. Your and your may vary, for all will be very. We think you had better succumb. Come, 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 and join our expressions of me. On the subject we pray you'll be dumb. Dumb dumb. Your notions are many. I'm not worth a penny. The work of your guns is mum. Mum mum. You've a very good bargain in me. On the subject we pray you'll be dumb. Dumb dumb. We think you had better succumb. Come, come. Lots of the fish in the sea, and lots of the fish, fish in the sea, and lots of the fish, fish in the sea, and lots of the fish, fish in the sea. 